God still makes it rain. Uh, perhaps you are in, figuratively speaking, a kind of drought in your life. Those times in which there's something that you cannot control and the only way out of it is for God to move. And I think the word of encouragement to you today is God still makes it rain. And he uses the prayers of his people in miraculous ways. I, I think of drought, you know, in figurative terms, as any time or season in your life where you have come up against a problem or face a real need that you know that you cannot affect its change any more than you could make it rain. And when it goes on, it is something that causes your soul to be thirsty and thirsty for God. God had set it up. There was a drought and the people became thirsty for three and a half years. Now, I've experienced life like that so much in prayer and so much in life where as I've been a, a spiritual leader for many years and I've seen it and I've just, I've just learned, you know, that you, you'll, have, you'll have more days where you look in, in the natural, you can't see it yet. You'll have maybe more days like that than you will of the glorious manifestations, but, but, but you keep looking. Beloved, I'm praying for our land. I know there's a drought. I know that the land is scorched and parched, bereft of real honor. There's a drought. When men have abused women and parents have abused children, and students have bullied their classmates. And we look everywhere and there's a drought. But I hear the sound of the rushing of rain. I hear every day the sound of the gospel, which speaks of a grace that is so powerful that it reaches all. That in Christ, as Paul said, there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's not black or white and male and female, but in Christ we become one and honor is restored. Let it rain, God. Let it rain. I know there's a drought in our land. I know that it is disheartening when we look and we see the nation around us that seems bereft of any real truth and confusion that is so deep that it seems as though what little paltry pieces of real nourishment are left have been pulled up at the roots and people will clamor towards any type of ideology that seems to fit the whims of the moment. The idols of our age are still materialism and popularity and fame and success and as they always have been I know it is a dry time, but listen with me, for I hear the sound of the rushing of rain. It is the sound of a gospel in which God has revealed in Jesus Christ the way, the truth, and the life. It is a joyful sound, it is a glad sound that invites those who lack wisdom to ask Him. It is the sound, the glorious sound of the promptings of the Holy Spirit who still woos and wins the hearts of those. So let us not stop praying because I hear the sound of rain. I know that the land is scarred and parched and the ground is cracked with polarization and disunity. But listen, and you will hear the sound of the rushing of rain, of a world in which God's love is available to every single person, and the pathway of hate is exposed for what it is, a trick of the enemy, 
and the dangers of hell and that the love of God becomes intensely attractive. It is the sound of the gospel. It is the sound of the grace of God. Let it rain. Let it rain, God. I just want to bless your life and invite you to open up your spiritual ears. Whatever type of drought you might be facing or might face in the future, that you would be given the ears spiritually to hear the sound of the gospel in whatever context you're in so that you would know that when God's people pray, he still makes it rain. And that's the gospel. 